Gentlemen, what is an absolute red flag a woman can raise on the first date? Oh boy, here we go. Long story short, I went on a date with a chick and we were vibing really well before she turned ice cold and began acting like a bee. At that point, I just wasn't enjoying it, so I made up some excuse about having some stuff to do and left. A few hours later, she texts me, was disappointed that I gave up so easy, and she was testing how much I liked her. Needless to say, I didn't ask her on a second date. I'd rather be single slash celibate than have a relationship slash do it with the entire cast of Mean Girl crammed into a single person with the maturity of a high school freshman. She asked me to drive her back home to ensure she hadn't left her iron on. Twenty years later, I'm still checking that she's locked doors, turned things off, locked up the pets, etc. That's a long time to stalk somebody. There are a few. One, she never bothers to engage in small talk during the day at all, and any attempt on your part is only met with single-word answers. Another would be if she kept talking about her ex during the date. Lastly, she answers her phone saying, Hey dad, this isn't a good time, but you quickly notice the name on the call display oddly matches the name of your own father who disappeared when you were little. R slash suddenly incest. Making comments to imply that she wants a worshipper slash gift giver instead of a partner. If you don't see an SO as an equal, it's a bad sign. Pay pig. I mean, you know, unless you're into that kind of thing, you know. No judgment. Is married, gets drunk before telling you, and during the dinner date orders a second dinner to go. I told her she is paying for the meal. It was my first date ever. We were in a bar that was having a cover band event. She went to get some drinks and I kept the table, and comes back chatting to a guy. Seems to be her friend, but after talking to him for a while, it was her boyfriend that was just back from a trip. He even had his travel bag with him. He was such a great guy, we even maintained contact for a while, and after they broke up, I told him about that day. Per my husband, tell them to read this in the most redneck, hick voice possible. When a girl looks like someone just peeing her oatmeal, keeps calling Angry Orchard Green Orchard, gets mad at the bartender by saying, I done got one of these last week, it was a green orchard, and then turns to you and says, Wanna fist me later? I also like anal. Personally, I disagree with my husband and believe this is a magnetic and appropriate way to exert one's dominance. And now he's telling me about her claim to be from a parallel universe that her pastor explained to her. Never mind, shut it down. I opened the restaurant door for her and she told me, I don't need a frickin' man to open my door. I walked her to the table, gave her $20 for a cab ride home, and walked out. I would have just bailed, frick the cab money. You're a better man than me. I want a man who treats me like a queen. Usually code for, I want someone to live and die for my happiness so I can be selfish forever. No thanks. I remember a very long time ago when I was like 19 years old. I'm 44 now. I met this chick who was working at a store, Thrifties, that I was transferred to for a week to help them out from a neighboring city. I was working for the same store. We hit it off while we were working that night and long story short, went out after work to a restaurant, Coco's. While we were eating, some dude walks up to her table and starts to ask her why she didn't pick up their kid since it was her turn to watch him. They start yelling at each other right there at the restaurant. Then the guy leaves, grabs their kid from his car, I'm assuming it was his car, I actually don't know, and plops him next to her in the booth while we are eating and left. I was polite and finished the meal and then said I had to go home. It was so awkward. The next day I had to go into work at that same store, but she wasn't working that day, so I didn't see her. I ended up working one more day after that and still didn't see her, so I went back to my store after that and didn't contact her. One week goes by and she ends up calling me at work, since cell phones were not a thing back then, and begs me to have breakfast with her so she can explain things. I have no idea why, but I ended up saying yes and met her the following Saturday in her city at some breakfast place. I show up at the restaurant and she is sitting there with her mother and grandmother. The girl then begins to apologize to me for what happened. She's crying and begging me for a second chance. While at the same time her mother and grandmother were begging me to give her a second chance. To who, by the way, I have never met before and I literally just met her. I can't remember the exact details of what happened at the end of that breakfast, but I never saw her again. I thought I was in the twilight zone. Still to this day, I always wonder how that dude knew we were at the restaurant since no one had cell phones back then. Telling you right at the beginning of the date how much she hates Martin Luther King Jr. Yeah, that was awkward. <laughs> I mean, yeah, awkward is one word for 
learning at the very beginning of a date that a person is a crappy racist. Woo. If she starts playing on her phone, that means A, she's just there for a free meal, B, she's already dating someone, C, she's not interested in you, D, all of the above. Your well-meaning coworker sets you up on a blind date with her fun friend. You agree to meet at the bar, but then her friend asks you to pick her up because she lost her license. You get to her apartment and she's arguing with a man out front. She flips him the bird before spitting in his face, then gets into your car. It is at this crucial point you notice she brought a suitcase full of a thing. After you finish the drink you ordered with your meal, she finishes her fifth one. The entire time you haven't said more than a few words. Not because you're being indifferent, but because she always interrupts with anecdotes about her abusive childhood. The bill comes, she slides it over to you. She informs you that she doesn't have any money and assumed you had intended to pay for the entire date. On the way to the car, she informs you that she wants to have unprotected intercourse. Don't worry, though. She tells you that you cannot impregnate her. She is always carrying another man's child. While taking her home, she begins gesturing to her suitcase while asking to live with you for a few weeks. She is broke, destitute, till she begins her job as a stripper on Monday. The man she was arguing with was letting her stay with him till she saved up enough money for her own place. Unfortunately, that man had kicked her out since she was bringing other men over to his apartment to frick. In her opinion, it was unfair. After all, she never agreed to only be sleeping with him exclusively. After pulling her hand out of your crotch and telling her you're not interested, you get to the apartment you picked her up from. Unfortunately, you live in the same apartment complex. Only a couple buildings around the corner. Far enough from where you park, but not so far that she doesn't follow you all the way to your front door. She S assaults you while trying to force her way into the apartment. You panic, but then you hear your cell phone ring. It's a telemarketer telling you about your vehicle's expiring extended warranty. You pretend it's work, push your way outside, lock the door, and hope she forgets the numbers scrolling across it. She follows you to your car, asking when you will come back home. You leave her standing in the rearview mirror while you speed off in the night. You then spend a few hours sitting in the mall parking lot, waiting for a chance to sneak back home. While on your third cigarette to deal with the second anxiety attack, even though you previously quit smoking for over one year, you come to a grand realization. Your coworker is kind of a bee. Apologies for the awful experience, but congratulations on the compelling narrative. Asking if you have ever done H and would like to shoot up later. Unless you do want to shoot up later. Same for doing lines of coke. This takes me back to the early 20s version of me and a fine lass named Rebecca. We met at a New Year's party. She's tall and artsy with some feather arrangements in her hair, I complimented. Oh, midnight and a proper kiss on the cheek with the promise of a first date to start 1991. Picked her up for said date a few days later and same hair treatment. She tells me she's obsessed with birds and always wears a feather somewhere. Uh, okay, no problem. She's still cute and full light and this just makes her quirky, right? I was just a few years older and we went to a really nice Italian place near D.C., she remarks how nice to be out whether grown up as she's finished college and has been dating boys. Nice. Dinner is great until dessert. The whipped cream on mine reminds her of her last boyfriend. Then she tells me in great detail how she stalked him, hiding in bushes near his house to spy, effing with his tires and covering his entire car in whipped cream and eggs. Isn't that just the funniest? Check. Please. Are you sure she wasn't actually a bird? I was expecting subtle hints coming here, but instead I feel fortunate I've apparently managed to avoid absolute train wrecks. She asked me to take her shopping on her second date. I have my dad drop us off, didn't have my license at the time, age 15. So anyways, she takes me to Victoria's Secret to shop for clothes and stuff. About an hour and a half later, she thinks she has enough things and asks me to help her take her things to go check out at the counter. I grab the rest of her things and take them over to the counter to pay. That's when she just kind of stands there and acts like I'm gonna pay. I said something like, <laughs> this is gonna be expensive, where do you work? And she says something like, what do you mean? I thought you were helping me out with this. I kinda just asked if she was joking and when she confirmed multiple times that she wasn't. She claimed, it's not okay to make the lady in a relationship happy or some bull crap. First of all, we went on one date-ish movies, and now today, this is not a relationship. 
Second of all, I'm 15. I don't have $150 to waste on clothes for someone I've spent all of maybe six hours of my life on. I keep refusing to pay, mostly saying that I don't have the money to pay in the first place, even if I wanted to. She calls her dad and has him pick her up instead of waiting for mine. Praying my date next weekend doesn't go the next way. I've only dated two people before, and she was the first. I don't think this girl is the same way as the last at all, though, so I think we'll work out. Yep, OP, that's the only thing you've got to worry about. As long as she doesn't ask you to pay for Victoria's Secret, you're set. Went on a date with a girl I met on OkCupid. I picked her up since she didn't have a car. It was 40 minutes to get to her place. She wasn't anything that she looked like in her pictures, and she is very much not my type, but I figured, you know what, I'll give her a chance, who knows? She suggests that we go to Denny's because it had the best breakfast, definitely doesn't, by the way. We sit down and try to have conversation, but here are the topics she wants to talk about. Dang, our server is hot. I love girls with big butts. Twice this happened. I went on a date with this submissive guy before you, and he was so cute, but like way into me, and I just didn't feel the same, you know? Isn't it weird how many black people are here? She was black, I'm white. Well, check comes on a single piece of paper, and she asks, how much is it? So I show her the receipt, and she proceeds to go into her purse to get money out. Now look, my view is if I ask you to the date, I'll pay. If you want to pay for yourself, I have great respect for you. However, I feel that on the few occasions that I do pay for you, it makes it more meaningful since you weren't expecting it. So she's at the point where she's just pulling out change, and I'm thinking, you know what, it's only like $20, I'll pay for her, even though I didn't really enjoy this date. I tell her, I can pay for you, it's no big deal, but she insists on paying her share. I literally cannot convince her to save her own money. So we get up to the counter to pay, and she seems up apathetic, no longer interested in talking to me. So once we get out of Denny's, I ask, hey, are you all right? You seem indifferent. She says, yeah, it's just I hate the rain. It wasn't even raining. Driving nowhere, really, and I ask what she wants to do. She still looks blank and says, not really anything. I just want to go home. I want to keep hanging with her to see if I can make her feel better, so I throw out ideas like going to the mall, movies, bowling. She says no to all, just wants to go home. Okay, here is the major red flag. I'm driving her home, and about three to four minutes of dead silence, she says, okay, so I'm going to be honest with you. The reason why I'm upset is because you made me pay for myself. What? I explained that she was giving me signs of not wanting me to pay for her, and I respected her decision to pay for herself. Then she rambles on about how unfair she's treated, and I'm just giving her the silent treatment. We get to her house, and I crap you not, she looks at me and says, So, do you want to come inside for a while? I'm dead, but look at her and say, I'm sorry, but no. She walks off inside, I drive home, and she's blocked me. A few weeks into dating my first real girlfriend, things started to turn weird. She started telling me that she was hanging out at an old friend's place, but one of his buddies was hitting on her hardcore. I told her to just walk away, but she kept making up excuses that they were all in a room together and she couldn't leave. I told her to tell him she had a boyfriend who wants him to back off, and she told me he started threatening me. She kept asking me what I wanted to say to him, but I just sort of brushed it all off because this was a conversation through a third party with someone I had never met before. Situations like this kept popping up. She would tell me she was around some guy who was being aggressive towards her, trying to get me to react. I kept trying to act tough to these random people, 15 years old, but really I was just confused. After about a month of dating, she tells me that best friend's boyfriend texted her and said that he loves her and that they should run away together. We all went to the same high school, so I don't really know where they planned to run to. She was relaying all of this to me, and I started to question it. He was such a nice guy. Why would he want to break off his relationship? Why is this conversation even continuing? Why is he persisting? Have you told him you're not interested? Shouldn't you be able to easily shut this down? She gets frustrated that I'm not playing into her hand, so she calls me and decides to escalate it to, well, I'm kind of considering it. That was obviously the breaking point and a very easy response. Really? Well, then we should break up. She flips her opinion really quickly. I didn't mean it. I was crazy. I'm sorry. I don't even like him. I'm proud of 15-year-old me for sticking up for myself and completely cutting contact. Turns out, which is pretty obvious in hindsight, that she just loved guys getting jealous over her and was lying the entire time to get me going. In every relationship I've had since, I've kept an eye out for the every guy I've talked to is into me red flag. 
You are a champ. I had similar experience at 17. Unfortunately, I was far more naive then. Once started dating this gal who shared everything with me from her dog that she had to take care of for the last year and a half because he was dying, to the S trauma she had been through, to her birth control that was suffering side effects from, and how much it's going to cost to fix her car. Nothing positive was being shared, and all the bad stuff she was kind of brushing over like it still wasn't the worst she'd been through. I had to ghost her because I'm a bleeding heart, and even I couldn't help but want to try to fix her problems, but I had enough problems on my own to deal with that. My brother was in the army when he was set up on a blind date by a friend's girlfriend. Apparently, during the first ten minutes of dinner, she was talking about how she would be such a great and loyal army wife, and how she thought army wives were so brave and admirable, and how she would never leave him if he was injured. He had literally just met this girl. He stuck it out through dinner, faked sick, and left. She pursued him pretty hard after, but he lied and told her he decided he wasn't really over his ex and wasn't ready for a relationship. He said about a month later she tried to text him with a booty call and said she even tried to sweeten the deal by saying he didn't need to wear protection because she was on birth control. How many red flags can one girl have? Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. I went to meet a woman from an online dating site, and at the last minute she texted to ask if I could swing by her house, which was only a few blocks away from the Starbucks we were supposed to meet at. That should have been a tip-off in retrospect, but we chatted a lot online, so I felt comfortable enough. Maybe she just needed a lift or something. Instead, I come up to her house, and when she opens the door, she is wearing an ankle bracelet. She begs me to please understand how she didn't want to mention it on the dating site and to please hear her out. I was naturally uncomfortable by this point, but also curious, so I sat down for a few minutes in her living room. She told me of this domestic dispute she had with her ex that had turned violent and now she was on 30 days house arrest. A very overweight teenage girl came into the room at this point, and the woman said, Oh yeah, I also forgot to mention I come with this. Now I just wanted to get the heck out of there. I started making excuses to leave, but she kept trying to get me to stay. Please, just one date after I'm done with house arrest. The thing I could learn from a man of your smarts. I said nothing besides, I really have to go, we'll think about it. I just walked out the door and she followed, explaining that the bracelet had a range of several feet outside. I was rummaging for my car keys next to my car when she grabbed my left hand and slid it under her shirt, placing it directly on her bare breast. She looked up at me with a wicked grin. I got in the car without a word and just drove. I never felt so happy to drive away from a place in my life. So yeah, asking me about red flags may not be a great idea. Though hopefully I have wised up since then. <laughs> you know, I was, I was almost going along with this story until the, the things I could learn from a man of your smarts. Sure thing, OP. Had dinner with a blind date. Only saw her eyes maybe for three minutes before she was glued to her Instagram and Snapchat giggling to herself and replying to her followers. Tried to have a decent combo, but she was like, uh-huh, that's cool. Waitress comes. She doesn't even bother looking at the menu. Steak, fries, and a glass of champagne. Then, out of the blue, how much money do you make? I got up, told her the date was done, and left her at the restaurant. She was so glued to her phone, she just nodded. She blows up my phone, raging that I was supposed to buy her dinner, and exclaimed she had no money or ride to get back to her man's place. So yeah, she was fishing for free food and drinks. You made it out perfectly. Congrats on you. She brings a guy from Tinder to the date. His name is Craig. He uses a paperclip as an earring. He spends most of the date sewing. Still wasn't the worst date I've ever had. So now I want to hear about the worst date. A girl I dated was really obsessive over her ex, but not like wanting to get back with him. No, 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 good sir. She just wanted to make sure he didn't date anyone and would force everyone around her to help her, including me. I found out from her ex, a really nice guy, that on the first date we went on, she chose a specific restaurant because he had a date and she wanted to ruin it. Yikes. I hope you don't mind, but I couldn't find a babysitter and brought my kid. Um, yes I do mind. You could have rescheduled. This is supposed to be a date, not a future daddy test. Here's some money for you and the kid to have a nice dinner. Bye. Yes, also lying about having kids and having known when you were at her place. <laughs> I gotta be honest, I, maybe I'm older, maybe I'm more understanding of things, but, uh, OP, I'm not sure if you're the one who dodged a bullet or if she is. When she gets too personal and wants to know the street you grew up on, your first dog's name, what your first car was, where you went to school, mother's maiden name, 
the three wacky numbers on the back of your credit card. She will raise a big red flag if she treats strangers like crap. You can tell a great deal about somebody by how they treat people who have no material benefits to them. Super underrated observation. I actually have to go to business restaurant slash bar when I know the staff very well. They give me tons of info on how potential business associates treat them, and it is about 90% predictive of what they are truly like to deal with down the road. Automatically ordering the most expensive thing on the menu if they are not splitting the bill. Not treating wait staff with respect. Not trying to maintain eye contact while not being socially awkward. This one is context dependent. Constant use of their phone. Grossly bashing their ex or talking at length about them. Not the normal, oh, my ex was a dong, but really going on about it. Being generally inconsiderate or arrogant. Diverting conversation to talk overly about themselves, even on topics not about them. Not showing any interest in me as a person. My ex and I used to split all our bills, and we went on twice as many dates. When every time you bring a girl out as a financial burden, you start to resent spending time with someone. Apart from the usual ones, I really know it's not going to work if they start complaining about having to walk a short way when together. I get it if they're wearing heels, but if we plan to go to a restaurant, walk around a bit and see a movie, and 200 meters into the walk they start complaining, then it's just not going to work out. I dated a girl once who would get mad if I wouldn't circle around or wait until one of the closest spots were open. Her dad would do it all the time. I happen to be one of those people who park as far away as possible so my car doesn't get dinged by careless kids. It didn't work well. Talking about how they want a man who knows how to treat a lady, or checking out other guys with their eyes while still actually talking to you, or ridiculous things you said, or telling you their ex-boyfriend is a policeman and if anyone hurts me, he will get them, or telling you they have a boyfriend but he's going to be in jail for six months, or ordering as much expensive stuff as they can, obviously more than they can eat because they think a date is a chance to burn a guy for as much as they can get. Or telling you about how their ex was in butthole, in fact all of their exes were buttholes. Or lying about their appearance or age before a blind date. Or some of the first questions they ask you are how much do you earn, what car do you drive, where do you live, do you own or rent. Or telling you their last boyfriend was so generous he even bought you a house and gave it to you. Korean girl in China. Receiving more than a dozen calls on her phone, mostly that sounded male, while still in the car on the way to the restaurant. Chinese girl. I'd already decided not to date her again before we reached the restaurant. These are all things I have personally experienced dating. Yikes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure it is, OP. I definitely believe that that many women have been interested in someone like you. You seem like a real catch. Came to this thread afraid I'd see something I'm inadvertently doing as a red flag because I can be a little socially awkward. Leaving this thread feeling more normal than ever. Holy crap, guys, I'm sorry you're meeting these women. All I see here is a green flag, trying to make sure you aren't a bad person or trying to improve yourself. There are some good ones here, like mistreating servers, making it clear she sees you as a source of money and expensive gift, or carrying on about an ex. I don't want to just repeat what everyone else is saying. So my red flag is anyone who seems to be constantly on or have something they're trying to prove. If they can't just relax and stop trying to show what an edgelord slash victim slash not like other girls or whatever sort of character they're trying to convince you they are, being around them is going to drain you every time. It's not worth the pee to me. I like genuine, real people who aren't constantly putting on some show. Hey, OP, maybe also just give people a break. First dates are stressful and people sometimes... Put on airs because they're just nervous. Maybe don't be so frickin' judgmental and give people a shot. When you're dating a girl for a few months who has a small appetite, but over time you've realized her stomach is increasing in size. Finally, you make a joke and she breaks down crying, saying she was art and really loves slash needs you. So being nice and understanding, you stay with her because you feel you can raise a child and willing enough to do anything it takes. Until you bring it up to a mutual friend and he refuses to look at you. You begin pestering him about it until he spills the beans and revealed she cheated on you in the beginning of the relationship because she thought you guys wouldn't last long and she is going to use the baby as leverage to keep both of you together and use you for life. You get to her house, tell her everything you know, and all she says is, who told you? In the end, you leave her and all of her friends questioning your entire existence. The next year, you meet a wonderful girl by chance and have now been going strong for two years. That's a really long first date. 
In all seriousness, though, that's a terrible ordeal and it sounds like it really affected you. Counseling slash therapy might not be a bad idea if there's lingering bitterness. Bringing up crazy things she did to guys in past relationships. It doesn't make me think you're savage or cool, it makes me think that's going to happen to me. When they ask you to pay for something for them or suggest that you do it for the next time. Went out with a girl for a really bad date. There was almost zero chemistry between us. Things got slightly better as the date progressed, but I still wouldn't even say it was in my top 100 dates, and I don't think I've ever had that many. I offered to drop her off on our way out, and she agrees. On the way to her place, we saw an ad for The Incredibles 2, and to strike up a conversation, I asked her if she liked those films. She said she did, and then said that we should go see it next time we go out. Then she added, but you'll pay for my ticket, right? I laughed and didn't say anything because I assumed she was joking, and she said with a serious tone, don't be cheap, you've got a nice car. It's clear you make good money, you can afford to pay for my ticket. She was out of my sights the second she said that. I just laughed again and said, sure, we can do that. I dropped her off and never contacted her again. I went on a date with a girl who ordered a steak and a cheesecake and then proceeded to eat them at the same time, like in the same bite. Look, I get weird food combinations, but if you're going to make that combination on the first date, there's a strong chance you have some bodies under your floorboards. That almost sounds good. Might have to try that. Not on the first date, but my ex broke up with me because I wasn't putting enough into the relationship. I didn't buy her a four-month anniversary present, then begged to get back together with me and continued to complain that I didn't buy her things. Excuse me, lady, that I just found out my cat is ill and need to pay for her meds. Presents can wait. I'm so glad that relationship is over. Late to the party, but here goes. I messaged a girl a couple of times on a dating app and never heard from her again, so I thought that was the end of it. About two weeks later, she randomly answers saying, sorry for not reposting, but she was in a car crash and blah blah, even sent me a picture of a crashed car. This set off some alarms, but I figured frick it. So we chatted a bit and she wanted to meet up to smoke some weed and she was cute, so I figured why not? I arrive at her place and she gets in the car muttering something about her roommate taking a poop in the toilet and having a conversation with her while she's in the shower. Okay. As we are driving to a spot to smoke, she starts telling me about the car crash and how it was a drunk driver that hit her and how, My dad is a hell's angel, I'll so just get my dad and his buddies to pay him a visit. Excuse me? Was all I said, and she repeated what she just said, this time implying some broken bones would be made, and that she might even get her dad's Hell's Angel lawyer to sue him as well. Now at this point, we have started smoking, so I was wondering if I was hearing her right. So I asked, a Hell's Angel lawyer? And she freaking snapped back, that's what I just said. So, needless to say, she was freaking me out major by this time, and I kept looking in my rearview mirror, half expecting to see her dad on his bike swinging a chain above his head. But nothing. She said some other crazy crap about working four jobs, and that all of them were linked to the Hells Angels in some way, so after about 40 minutes of smoke and hearing her Hells Angels stories, I politely took her home, and my excuse was I had to be up early. I dropped her off and said it was nice meeting you with a smile and a wave. I cannot tell you how happy I was after I drove off. In fact, I was so happy to be away from the potential bike gang daughter that I started laughing my butt off. Full-on maniacal laughter. Just pure joy kind of laughing. I'll never forget how happy that laugh was, knowing I was going home to just my cat and not some crazy biker chick. Made me really appreciate being single for a while. Sweet lord. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.